Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Tanner here and welcome to a new Ninjago video here on the channel. In today's video, we are continuing our series of season 15 episode reviews by taking a look at episode 13 of season 15 entitled The Calm Before the Storm. This video review will indeed contain spoilers for the episode at hand, so if you have not yet seen this episode, I recommend clicking off the video, watching the episode, and then coming back and watching this review. It'll still be here by the time you get back and it might just make for a better experience overall. Unless, of course, you don't care about that kind of thing, then welcome, let's go ahead and get started. So for this video review, we're going to be taking a look at a quick plot synopsis, then we'll get into the good and the bad, and then finally at the end of the video, I will give the episode a score out of 10. So in terms of this episode, what is a good way to describe it? What is a quick plot synopsis? I have written down here, the ninja learned that Kalmar has indeed awoken Wajira and she's on her way to Ninjago City, giving them little time to prepare. I think that's a very good way of summarizing this. Uh, this episode's kind of crazy, just getting into the good right off the bat, we see Wajira Wajira in all of her glory basically first thing in this episode and she looks great. I love how Wajira is, you know, showcased. She looks amazing. I love how powerful and sinister she is. It's a great first look at her all powered up again. Of course, we as Ninjago fans and viewers are kind of confused at first. We're like, wait, I thought Kalmar did not have the Storm Amulet. Turns out he actually does and we get a lot of answers to the last episode as well, which is the next thing that we're going to be talking about here. It definitely shows how Kalmar tricked Nia with a fake amulet, which I mean, we should have seen coming, but it didn't really show it in the last episode. Here we actually see it, so that's nice. It's a nice little wrap up there. Kind of wraps the bow on this entire thing, which I think is good. It's nice to get that context. Presenting it out of order is kind of awkward, I will admit, but I really enjoyed how they actually answered it. They could have just, you know, left it up in the air, but they actually show us and tell us at the same time, so that's good. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this episode was Ninjago City's response to Wajira's incoming. There's a weird emergency broadcast thing. It's very creepy, very sinister. Obviously, they're trying to evacuate the city because Wajira promises to flood the city and the sky goes dark. It's all purple and stormy. It makes for a very great and spooky environment. I really thought that Ninjago City was under threat here. A lot of the times when villains attack Ninjago City, it's not super threatening. This episode definitely admits that threatening aura. So I really enjoyed that. I thought this episode did a really good job at setting that up. Also for a couple of other things, I really enjoyed some minor stuff about this episode. Like Jay and Nia have a little moment at the beginning of this episode in an arcade. It's not the best thing ever, but of course it's always nice to see Jay and Nia kind of, you know, do something together, do activities together. Maybe it's to set up for something dangerous to come for these two, who's to say? We'll just have to wait and see for that. And overall, I thought that this episode was very good setup. Speaking of setup, of course, this episode is very good setup for the next episode. Wajira basically makes it to Ninjago City and brings a lot of flood with her, and we will have to just wait and see what happens in the next episode and what exactly will come from this attack. But I really enjoyed this episode overall. I thought this episode had some really good stuff going for it. I do have a couple of bad things though that I want to discuss. It's nothing really major, but I did have a couple of minor complaints. This episode does take a second to get going. I mean, after we see Wajira for the first time, we don't really get a lot of context until we actually get the backstory of how, I guess, Kalmar tricked Nia with the Fag Amulet. So there's a little bit of a gap in between there. And like I said, that gap does have some good stuff, like showcasing Jay and Nia spending time together. But at the same time, I kind of want to get back to the main threat of this episode, you know what I'm saying? Also, telling the story out of order is kind of weird. I already mentioned that earlier in the review, but it makes you think that you missed something. I started watching this episode and I thought that I was on episode 14. I accidentally turned on episode 14. Turns out, no, I'm actually watching episode 13 and uh, yeah, they're just telling the story Pulp Fiction style, which is okay, I suppose. I mean, it's interesting for Ninjago and we understand the context when it's all said and done, but I just thought that that initial way of doing it was a little confusing, I'd say. Otherwise, though, this episode was absolutely fantastic. I'm really loving Wajira's presence and I can't wait to see what she does in future episodes. In terms of a score for this one, I think I'm going to go ahead and give this episode a 9 out of 10. I think that's a fair score. This episode is very good overall, but it just had a couple of minor complaints that I couldn't help but not overlook, if that makes sense. But let me know down below in the comments what you think about this episode. That'll pretty much do it from my thoughts here today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking out this review. If you enjoyed the review, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and check out the links down below in the description for other forms of social media. As always, big shout out goes out to my Patreon supporters, including once again the Marvelous Jan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video once again. My name is Hannah Fishies, and with that, I bid you farewell.